You're listening to The Dangerous Mind of Mark Yoshimoto Nemkov. No excuses, no BS, no pants. Hey, how are you doing today? You're listening to the Microphone Playboy Podcast. Welcome back. So today you're listening to the TLM67. And this has no EQ on it, so I'm going to compare it against the U87 in just a moment. But let's talk about the TLM67 because I don't think I'm alone in thinking that because I purchased the TLM67 before I bought a U87. And I bought the TLM67 thinking if I buy the TLM67 and I like it, I don't need to buy a U87, right? It's a cheaper microphone, more affordable microphone. Saying cheap at that price point, just it doesn't feel right. Because, you know, they are, they, they overcharge for, you, for what they sell you. I mean, they sell you amazing products, but are they worth, is the TLM67 worth $2,400? That's what they're selling it for now. Is it worth 20, I think it's maybe more than that, but let's just go with $2,400, $2,500. Is it worth $2,500? I don't know. But when you think about it, what's involved here? I mean, you're using the same capsule as in the U87. The iconic K870. It's got the same body style as the U87. It's got, you know, it's the same exact size and the head baskets are exactly the same. The only physical difference between them is that the TLM67 has a different, well, the body shell is different. It's a different color and it has this Alfred Hitchcock-esque little coin, <laughs> commemorative coin of, uh, of Mr. Newman himself, Mr. Neumann who uh, is is the father of eternally amazing microphones, the father of VO standard microphone genius. I mean, really, when you think about it, right? I mean, everything, everything, all mics are compared one way or another to another Neumann mic, right? I mean, the U87, everything's compared to the U87 or the 47 or, you know, the KM84. But the TLM67, Transformerless Microphone 67 is a different animal, and a lot of people don't like it. A lot of people think it sounds off, and a lot of people really kind of feel offended. This, this is what I love. I love the fact that there are people who are so passionate about microphones that they are offended that Neumann tried to do a, a well, a solid state homage to a U67 sound, a tube microphone sound. And what makes a tube microphone different from a FET microphone, other than the fact that the circuits are obviously different? One has a tube and one has a, you know, solid state parts, all solid state parts. But what, what is the sonic difference between them, right? And really it comes down to what people feel is uh, the smoothness of tubes, the saturation of tubes when you hit it hard. But then again, you know, the pleasing sound of tube saturation really adds to the character of what makes a U67 a U67. Because it's really, it's very clean sounding mic. That's first and foremost, it's a very clean sounding mic. But it has a certain character to it, a certain richness and character to it that is driven by the tube. So does the TLM67 sound like a U67? I do not have a U67 to compare it to. Um, but flatly, it does not. It has its own character. And what the TLM67 is attempting to do is replicate some of that tube saturation. But when you do it in solid state, right? I mean, I think we all know that there is a difference between tube saturation and solid state saturation. And even though solid state saturation and the modeling of tube, tube distortion, especially for guitars, has come a long way, since the tube saturation style uh, distortion that you would find on an older, like if you bought a PV amp in the 80s, <laughs> if you bought a PV amp in the 80s, they had like a little distortion knob on it. And it did. It sounded, it sounded bad, right? It sounded very hard edged. It didn't sound like tubes. And so saturation really is a tricky animal. Because you want it to sound pleasing, harmonically pleasing. But I think Neumann has achieved something pretty cool here. Because while it isn't a really good, uh, while it isn't a one-to-one -one copy of a U67 sound, 
What I think they have is something in between a 67 and an 87. Now, I'm going to switch to the U87 because I want you to hear the difference. I want you to hear how close they are or aren't. You tell me. So now we're on the U87. And I, I would hope that you can hear a difference between them. Now, what the U87 feels to me, and the, again, this is without any EQ. Both of the mics have no EQ on them. The U87 feels to me a little bit more, you know, a little bit softer. It has that transformer. It has an actual transformer in it. And the TLM67 is trying to imitate the sound of a transformer. It's trying to add a little bit of heft and perhaps a little, a little bit of transformer saturation. But what you're not getting, and you can't really replicate this really without, without an actual transformer, is that little bit of a sense of compression or just a squish, that transformer squish that you get naturally with a transformer. So you can imitate the, you know, the thickening of that low mid, right? Right around 500 hertz or so. You can really imitate that pretty well with solid state. But what you can't get, and back on the U87, is really the smoothness that happens in that range. Now, overall, I definitely feel that these are two totally different microphones. They live in the same family. They're siblings, but they're more like half-siblings, you know? I, I think they're definitely, uh, you know, brothers of another mother, in a way. The U87 just has a sound to it that I think feels a lot more musical in general. I think that this, this sound that feels a little bit more, uh, I would say, not softer so much. Softer is the wrong term. But I feel more forgiving, more, more smoother overall than the TLM67. But the TLM67 feels a little bit more mid-rangey push, like a little bit more of a lower mid-rangey push. And I think the TLM67 overall really does work pretty well on voiceover. I think it's a great choice for voiceover. It's a quiet microphone. It's got a little bit of character to it. I've been using the, the TLM67 for promo stuff because I feel like it cuts well. I feel like this saturation, when you really, when you lean into it, you know, when you're like, uh, get ready to laugh out loud this July at the Irvine Improv. Eddie Griffin, the comedy legend himself, is coming to town for two nights only. It's got a nice edge to it. Here, you know, let me do the same read on the U87. Get ready to laugh out loud this July at the Irvine Improv. Eddie Griffin, the comedy legend himself, is coming to town for two nights only. So, for sure, the TLM67 is a lot punchier in this regard. So, I have been really feeling that the TLM67 will work for pretty much almost anything that the 87 does in terms of what I do. Um, what the 87 does give you is a little bit of that authoritative bottom end, the, the authoritative thickness that I don't think you get with the TLM67. The TLM67 feels more present. It's a little bit more in your face. And then when I go back here on the 87, I, I think the 87 sound is very pleasing and very easy to listen to. I think that with the 87, you could definitely do longer form work without it being fatiguing to the listener's ear, where potentially the, the TLM67 may be. But, you know, I mean, again, this is splitting hairs on two really great recording tools. But let's go back to the TLM67. Um, so, again, this is it with no EQ on it. And I actually like to, per, to use it for work with this EQ on it. So I've just given it a little bit of a dip in the low end. What I've done here is, uh, what is that? 80 hertz is a little bit of a duck at 80 hertz right there. I have over here, I'm just reading off the screen here at the MT48. I have a 1.7 dB push at 6. 6 is a very important frequency for me um, overall for my voice. And here... Oh, hold on. I'm t I keep switching it off because I'm trying to do two things at once. And then here I have like a little bit of a 1.3 dB lift at 11 to just give it a little bit more air. Um, I don't know if I need that. Hold on. Let me take that out. All right. I think that that seems to work better. I think without the air, it's it's fine. 
Um, but you know, again, you can add that if you want to, if you want to give it a little bit more sense of air up here. But the hallmark of Neumann microphones is that they all take EQ brilliantly. You know, like the U89. We're going to revisit the U89 with EQ because the U89, I think, is really meant to be uh, manipulated. That sound is meant to be EQ'd and adjusted and tinkered with. But it's, it's created, that microphone is created in a way that it captures pretty much all the frequencies in such a beautiful manner that you can really manipulate the EQ and get what you need out of it with, without you destroying the integrity of your sound. Unless that's your intention, if you want to do some extreme stuff to it, you can. That is really the thing with when you get to higher quality recording tools is that you can do more with them after the fact because you are recording, again, as I had mentioned before if in the previous episode with the U87, is that you can't EQ what is not there. Okay? So if your microphone does not capture frequencies well, all the frequencies well, and you're trying to EQ a certain range, and when I said that 6K is a very important frequency for my voice, 6K is, is really kind of the border between where the upper mids and the highs kind of join together. And in a lot of microphones, especially when you look at microphones, um, again, we're going to talk about head baskets for a second. When you look at microphones that have a cylindrical head basket, not like the chiseled head basket on a U87. When you look at those microphones, a lot of them have a kind of a weird notch around 6K. And that has to do with the acoustics of the head basket and the way that really phase cancellation happens and 6K just seems to be an affected area. And the reason that a lot of cheaper microphones sound like crap is because they also cheaper K87 variant capsules also seem to have a weirdness to them around that range. They seem to break up and fall apart really in the range where the mids meet the highs. And a lot of times the highs are over-accentuated, so really that, that juncture at 6K is really kind of not, not necessarily like a smooth transition point, but more of a fault line. And you'll find that in a lot of cheap mics. And, and I apologize if I'm giving you nightmarish flashbacks to when you first started out with your MXL mics, and you're like, why can't I get this to sound good? Why, why is it falling apart when I EQ it? When I EQ it, it sounds like it, it folds in half. And that's why better quality microphones capture a better uh, soundscape across the entire frequency spectrum so that those frequencies can be manipulated easily instead of you fighting against the sound of your recorded uh, signal. So overall, back to the TLM67, this solid state thing, <laughs> this solid state beast, it, it, the funny thing is when you open up the TLM67, right, you open up other microphones, you, you screw off the bottom cap and you slide off that body tube and you look at the parts in them and the, the U87 is all like through hole parts. You know, it's, it looks like it, it's the same circuit design as it has been since forever. And those beautiful capacitors and resistors, the transformer sitting there, you know, even that big ugly choke, that thing in the middle that everybody's like, what the hell is this thing? You know, it looks like a little square, kind of has like a little round thing in the middle of it, the choke. I mean, it's all beautiful. I love it. And then you open up the TLM67. And I think that you're going to feel disappointment because what you find is a little tiny board that is packed with SMD, okay, surface mount parts. And a lot of people harsh on surface mount parts. They think that they're microphonic. They don't sound as good. They're a little bit too, well, a little too clinical, maybe a little too clean. And maybe that's what's adding to the harder edge on this microphone. It's all surface mount parts. There, there are a couple of through hole parts in it, but really uh, it's, all, it's all surface mount parts. And, and the inside of the mic, 80% of the mic inside the mic is like air. There's like one board and there's another board under the capsule deck for all the switches, but there's not a whole lot going on because they're all miniaturized surface mount parts. And, you know, so you look inside that mic and you're like, 
I just paid all this money for this. What you're paying for is the sound. You're paying for the sound. You're paying for, you're, you're paying for the quality. You're paying for what will hopefully last you a lifetime. Look at all the vintage U87s out there. Even the ones that look beat to crap, right? <laughs> look at, they're all, st- they're all still out there. I mean, you know, I think we all know somebody who's had a U87 that has needed service or repair. And a lot of times that's a capsule repair, a capsule replacement, because the capsule's all covered with spit and and tobacco breath on it. But overall, these things will last you a lifetime if you take care of it. You know, mine's sitting in my booth. And uh, it doesn't go anywhere. I don't uh, don't drop it. (laughs) It never gets hit by a drumstick. It never, gets, uh, it never gets abused. It gets treated lovingly. And so I expect it to, to last forever. And I like that. So the, use, the use, U87 versus TLM67, that argument, it's legitimate. And I think that, again, in terms of voiceover, the TLM67, it really shines because I think it has a nice, uh, more... The transparency, well, transparency is a really funny word to use, but the more direct sound of the, the TLM67, I think works really well for a lot of different kinds of voiceover. Again, you know, I've been using this for promo stuff, but again, you can use this for commercials. If you, if you were doing broadcast stuff, if you're doing advertising, the 67, I think is a great choice for audiobooks, I don't know. I don't know if this would be a really great choice for audiobooks, but again, you're hearing it right through the MT48. And you're hearing it uh, using really just kind of no, no processing, no, here, I'm going to take, I'm going to take the EQ off again. So, but think about this. I mean, again, you know, if you're just going to plug a mic into an interface and that's going to be your sound, I mean, then really you're just stuck with the sound of the mic. But I think the TLM67, even though it, it has that transformerless, the, the faster transients that transformerless circuits give you. I think that, again, you pair it up with something. You pair it up with a preamp that's going to give you different tones in there, right? An API preamp that's going to give you a little bit more of that mid-forward energy. I'm going to put the EQ back on. <laughs> so you pair it with something that is going to enhance maybe more of that low end thickness with a transformer in it. So you use it with a preamp with a transformer in it. And I think you're going to get back some of that, some of that nice, richer character that seems to be missing. It has a colder, has a colder mid-range. It still has that mid-range purr. And it still cuts through a mix like crazy. Um, I did a commercial. Uh, I did a grocery store commercial. Uh, on the 67. Get Gelson's delivered to your door in as little as one hour. Order from our wide range of carefully selected produce, the finest cuts of meat and seafood, as well as our chef-crafted signature and seasonal recipes from Gelson's Kitchen. Shop our unique collection of the best quality local specialty and organic products, and be sure to use your Gelson's rewards for even more savings. Place your order today at shop.gelson's.com and get free delivery on your first three orders. That's shop.gelson's.com. Terms and conditions apply. And I purposely chose the 67 for it, the TLM 67 for it, because I knew that this was going to be a commercial that was going to be played back a lot uh, in streaming audio. It was going to be on radio and streaming audio. But, the, but I think the big ad buy portion of it was going to be over, um, you know, the streaming radio. I forget what those streaming radio networks are. I haven't finished my coffee yet. So um, like Odyssey and stuff like that. Uh, and um, so anyway, so I, ne- I kind of had this feeling it was going to be more of more of the commercial would be heard more on a phone than it would be on your car radio. But I thought that the TLM 67 would do a great job in really presenting that audio uh, more, more, a little bit more present, a little bit more in your face on, uh, you know, consumer audio uh, through a phone speaker. That's what I'm trying to say. Again, I have not finished my coffee yet. And it came out great. And the client loved it. It was a success. It, uh, they, it got like, a, it got, it got a millions of spins. And so it worked out. And I'm very happy with the choice of this. 
And if I ran it through my hairball gold or the Lola and I wanted to, I think the Lola would be too much. I think the, the mid, low mid push and then you have this, uh, this low mid saturation thing that's going on with the TLM67. I think that would be too much. But an API style preamp that's just maybe pushing a little bit more in the mid range, but not so much low mid range, you know, not so much in that nevish range, more in the API upper mid 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 upper mid range i think that that would work great um so yeah i mean again neumann mics are fantastic because you can manipulate them i think a lot more and a lot easier and i think you get a more magical (laughs) musical sound not magical you get a magical sound you get a more musical sound with a neumann mic and which is why they're so popular and they're still really pretty much considered the standards of music and voiceover. So the richness of this mic, the punchiness of this mic, I think the punchiness of this mic, and also that little saturated edge, which is somewhat similar to the saturated edge you get when you use a 416 up close. The byproduct of using a 416 up close is that saturated edge that cuts through everything. And I think you get something similar with the TLM67. I love this mic, but uh, again, it's not, it's not the mic for everything but it's the mic for this right now. So what do you think? Tell me your opinion of the TLM67. I want to know. All right, until next time, this is Mark Yoshimoto and MCOF, Fading to Black. There's a mic that I adore. It's not the usual sound. The Newman TLM67 is where my voice is found. A transformerless design, imitating tune so well. It's got the punchy color. My commercial voice work, you're the perfect home. Thousand bucks cheaper, yet you hold your ground. In the world of voiceovers, you're the best I've found. OTLM 67, you stand apart, not as pure as the U67, but you capture my heart with the same capsule as the U87. And punch, show the joy you bring For voiceovers clear, for commercials so grand With the TLM67, I found my perfect hand oh, 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 oh. TLM67, with your unique flair In the world of microphones, nothing else can compare For the voiceover magic, you're my chosen one Together we'll make history, our journey's just begun